welcome. Here we are again, starting a new Sangha. So I hope uh, you feel welcomed here because you certainly are. I would like to begin today with an invocation of the Gayatri Mantra. If you know it, you're welcome to join along with me as I chant it. Bhuvaswaha tatsa vitur varenyam Bhargo devasya dhimahi Dhiyo yonaf prachodayat Thank you. And as we wait our first guests to arrive, allow me to set the intention for this space as being a welcoming one, open for everyone, regardless of background, orientation, identity, ethnicity, no matter what you might be discriminated for, I hope that you allow yourself to find expression here. So thank you for joining me. Namaste, dear Chloe. Welcome, Skystorm. I trust that you all are doing as well as you can in this moment, despite whatever circumstances you might be dealing with at the moment. I am sure that the universe knows that you are doing the best as you can, and that's enough. You can't sleep, dear Chloe. That's okay. It can be frustrating when all we want or need is that rest. It shall come. Thank you, dear Laura, for your tiny, tiny... Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> Namaste, dear Anna. Namaste, Christine. May we come together as fellow students of life, to uplift each other, relate in one another's experience, and share positive sentiments. Dear Chloe, you shared that you got a floor chair for your meditation. I love that. Yeah, something about getting low to the ground while meditating. Very grounding. Although, there is also the trope of getting very high on top of a mountain. But I suppose you get as low as you can at the height that you are, close to the, the rock, the soil. Even then. I hope that you all are feeling as well as you can be. And if you're not, that's okay too. And if you want to share how you're feeling, please feel free. <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> please feel free. Mr. Guy, you wonder if I ever get angry or frustrated. These things do arise. And whenever they do arise, we can ask the question, do we want to give power to these feelings to take away our peace? Or can we remain peaceful even when anger or frustration arises? Remember that we are not our feelings. They occur to us and not as us. So even when they appear, there can still be peace in the space between you. Dear Skystorm, you shared that you spent six hours in the forest today barefoot and it was amazing. I love to hear that. Oh, how wonderful. 
Now that's grounding. Dear Anna, you are feeling positively energized. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> You're very funny, Sky Guardian. That's a clever use of emojis. I wonder how many people would get that. <laughs> I'm impressed. So welcome everyone. I would like to ask you all a question of the day. Today I'm wondering, what is something kind that you will do for your body or mind tomorrow? Welcome, Jer. I feel new here too. I feel like I just got here. My eyes are pretty blue at this moment. I suppose I am surrounded by a lot of blue things in my room. That helps. No matter how small of a thing it is, I'm curious. What can you do for your body or mind tomorrow? Please know that I'm not looking for a right answer. Nor is there necessarily a wrong answer. Well, if it's not a kind thing to do, I suppose. I assume that it is a kind thing. <laughs> Dear Anna, you share that you always walk, so a walk. Walking is very good for the body. Even when we're sore or healing from something, with due discretion of course, movement is great for our, our limbs. Dare you wonder how long I've been making this content? Uh, seven minutes. And 32 seconds so far. <laughs> Uzan, you said that you will try to stay in the moment and be grateful for it. I love that. Yes. That is a very good thing to do. And thank you, dear Amber. Thank you, Federica, for the heart me you had sent. And dear Jared, thank you for your heart me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Mr. Guy, you try to practice kindness without expectation. I love that. That's extra kind. Kindness squared. Kind thing to do while being kind is to do so without expectation. Kind to ourselves. Om Namah Federica, you will be watching me. Oh, well, I'm happy you find something kind here for you. Dear Jared, you just got home today from your surgery. Welcome back. Feels good to be home. Mm -hmm. How is your anxiety? And thank you, John F., for your heart me as well. Ram, ram. Franklin, you share to meditate and be grateful. I like that. Hello, Sparkle Lily. Yo, Sand, you're the first one here. You must be a time traveler. Were you asking my old soul? When I am in touch with my eternity, I feel older than time. But when I am in touch with my ever newness, I feel younger than this moment. Dear Mike, you share you will be releasing your anger 
and try to let it sleep. I love that. Thank you, John F., for a finger heart, a friendship necklace, and a tiny, tiny as well. Yahoo! And Franklin, thank you for your friendship necklace, too. Arion Dadsat. Thank you, dear Amber. Namaste, Sonia. And Sparkalili. I think I said hi to you now twice. You're just special. And hello, Lily. Hello, Shakira. Thank you for popping in. Dear Mads, hello. You share that you will feed your mind, body, and spirit with positivity. Jarrett, you will be resting, trying not to move your leg too much. Very tender. But that's good. Franklin asks about Ayurvedic medicine. It fascinates me. There's always more about it I could learn. Yes, I love that, Mr. Guy, you share. When we don't have expectations, the gifts we receive back are multiplied. Michelle, you share that you'll be doing some yoga nidra practice tomorrow. That's lovely. The sleep of the yogi. And Suzanne, thank you for your finger heart a moment ago. Ram, Ram. Federica, thank you for another quartet of tiny dinies. They sing and for your quartet of friendship necklaces, one for each tiny diny. Thank you. Dear Jared, you shared you're not a very anxious person, so minimal. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that too, Federica. Donya, you wonder how long have I been practicing? Well, ever since I was born, I was practicing how to breathe. Until I was unplugged from my mama. She said, I can no longer breathe for you. You'll have to figure it out yourself. Rudolph had shared that you're going to work out. Very good. Josan, you did a whole hour of meditations today. I like that. Taylin, hello. Tomorrow you will try to give both grace. I love that. Good. Our body and mind certainly deserves it. <laughs> hello, Clemens. Minette, you share in one word, forgive. I like that. By Bog, you share that Isla Nova has a wonderful Yoga Nidra on Spotify. Thank you for sharing for everyone. Federica. Hello, <laughs> you share you're going to meditate after work. I like that. My mother gave me a big responsibility at such a young age, indeed. Not even one year old. I have to figure out how to operate my own lungs. Expand. Contract. Expand. Contract. It's a lot of work. <laughs> but uh, my mama... Gotta give her baby some challenge so that... They learn how to be self-sufficient when she's gone. Dear Lala, you share you're going to hydrate and visit a temple. I love both of those things. May the temple of your body be hydrated by water. And may you be the spirit which hydrates the temple. 
thank you, dear Jared, for your pair of tiny nines. Yippee! Your pair of roses. Your donut. Your finger heart. And another pair of roses. Ram, ram. Do I know the song of the butterfly? Asks dear Franklin. I do not. But I have heard that a butterfly may flap its wings and through the right chain of events may be exactly what is required to create a hurricane on the other side of the world through all of the atoms bouncing off each other in just the right combination. Thank you, dear Babble Fishy, for your trio of roses, too. Rion Tatsa and Federica, thank you for your octet of ice cream cones. I, th I wish I had a tummy big enough to eat that many, so we'll have to share. Rum, rum. I would like to pause our question of the day there for now since I see a lot of wonderful questions thank you for exploring that with me I will say that for me one thing that I can do for my body and mind tomorrow is make sure I get enough vitamins Doxy you had asked how can you overcome stress that stops you from thinking logically under pressure your social anxiety is not helping you function as a normal human. Aww. Let me affirm to you that anxiety is very normal in our human experience. In fact, I would be impressed if you didn't experience some anxiety as a human. You must be superhuman. I've discovered that when we allow ourselves to be anxious, that can also tell us who our real friends are, because uh, genuine friends will absolutely allow us to be anxious in their presence, and they won't take offense to that, and in fact, there's a way of sharing that vulnerability in true friendship. So I hope that as a society, we decrease the stigma of being anxious so that you don't have to put on a mask. May you surround yourself by people that understand you and may you have the courage and confidence to express how you're feeling wherever you are. Guardian has given me some homework, figuring out something. <laughs> Thank you, little moonbeam, for your heart, me. Om Namah Shivaya. Dear G to Infinity, thank you for thinking about my mama. I think she is feeling better. At the moment, she's taking a nap. Sonia. You ask, does ADHD medicine affect the practice and our evolution? Of course, everything that we experience adds to our journey. If you are concerned that medication is going to take you away from your spirituality, don't worry. Your spirit because it's not the body, not the mind, is ever pure. Despite the changes that a body and mind may experience. Remember that your journey is unique to you. And if right now you find the most help in a medication, then you're absolutely valid for that. 
And if you find the most help off of medication, then you're valid for that too. Ultimately, it's not what we do that matters for our happiness, for our spirituality. It's how we do it, how we engage in it. So whatever you decide, I know that you will make it right by your ability to find yourself in that space you offer yourself. Dear Anna, thank you for your rose too. Radhe, Radhe. And Kalkiji, thank you for your pair of roses. Aryom Tatsa. Thank you for sharing something that you like, dear Franklin. I remind you of a character, dear Rosario. I hope it's a good character. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is sad, dear Marlin. Mm -hmm. But I am happy that you are able to think for yourself. My night has been quite well. Thank you for asking, Kalkiji. Thank you for another rose too, by the way. Jaya Sita Ram. And Sanguine Celestial. Thank you for your rose too. Hare Krishna. Asad, you've been very sick today. Oh, that's okay. I hope that you are getting enough rest for your body and mind. Hydration. Get your vitamins. Allow yourself to be taken care of. Oh, welcome, Fergie. Happy to know of your presence here. Here, Jane. What would I think about doing energy work? I feel like we're always doing energy work. Energy is always flowing. Sometimes through our words, sometimes through our silence, sometimes through our movement, sometimes through our stillness. Kalkiji, you found a new name of Shiva. It's Bhairava. Yes. Om Bram Bhairavaya Namo Namaha. Dear Mike, you had wondered what I do on my free time besides on this. I think it's good that you specified besides this, because I do consider this free time. <laughs> I spend freely, that's for sure. Well, I went for a walk earlier, and that was really lovely. And I like to watch documentaries. And I've been reading this book about Sikhism before I, I go to sleep some nights. I love learning about other cultures and traditions. Thank you, dear Fergie. I am well. How are you? Hello, Moonlight. Hi, Lala. Thank you, it's boobies. <laughs> and 
queen. If those... If there are people around us who are taking advantage of us and our energies, we can set boundaries with them. We can say that when you do this, it makes me feel like this. And therefore, I may ask of you that. That's a good formula for setting boundaries. State something you've observed. Relay how you feel when that happens. And then ask about some direct change that could be made to accommodate you. It's very healthy to set boundaries. It does sound very sad, Marlin. Moonlight, you sh you're sad too. Sadness is okay. Dear Federica, you wonder when my next video is. Well, whenever I have an idea for one, I suppose. I usually wait until one of you ask if I could make a video on something. <laughs> Your body, your choice, dear Marlin. Moonlight, you share your heart broken. Mm -hmm. Let that heart break, but let it break open rather than break down. Hello, dear angel. Dear Sonia, you ask if karma comes at play in certain decisions. Every decision. Karma means action. Hello, dear Mariham. Aww. Talon gives everyone who is feeling sad a hug. Thank you, Talon. That's a good thing to do. In moonlight. You share that you've been suffering through depression and loneliness. You're not alone in being depressed. Sometimes you just need deep rest when you're depressed. That's what Jim Carrey says. Dear Kalki Ji, you ask what my favorite Hindu deity is. Hmm. That's like Tom Holland. Asking who uh, that actor's favorite actor is. Well, it would have to be you, Kalki G. <laughs> Dear Rinan. You share that they say that when your heart breaks, it knits itself back together stronger. Must be a muscle then. As our muscle fibers tear. New cells are produced to fill in that gap. When we expand ourselves past our limit. And we feel separated. It is within that separation that we find a new part of ourself growing. Dear Kalkiji, yours is Shiva and Ram. Ah, and I love that because they're each other's devotees.
you're Jane, you ask, what's something that you can do for me? Give yourself a big hug. Tell your body that you love it. That would make me happy. D to infinity, you ask if you've missed the reading. No, we can read now, actually. Thank you, dear angel, for your team bracelet. Arion, that's a Kalkiji, thank you for another rose too. Om Namah Shivaya and Sanguine, thank you for your heart, me. Om Dum Durgai Namaha. Let's read from another section of Hollywood to the Himalayas. Our author has just had a miraculous interaction with a spiritual teacher in India. She didn't expect to be in India at all, but her and her husband went and she was along for the ride. They are both PhD students and her husband Jim was there to find a guru and ironically she was the one that found one instead and he didn't want her to find him one and so he left and although she had grown up with abandonment issues for the first time ever she felt inspired and confident to be alone now that she was unfolding in a dimension that she didn't know existed Let's continue to learn about this journey of dear Sadhvi Bhagavati Saraswati. Chapter 10 Seva That's a word that means selfless service in Sanskrit. I believe it's where we get the word service in modern times too. People ask, how did your seva begin? How did you start working for Pujya Swamiji? That's the guru that she just met. The seva began on the fourth or fifth day after I arrived. My eyes were flooded with tears, the beach within my heart being shaped by waves of love rising and crashing on the shore, each wave so high I was sure it would drown my very heartbeat. I saw Pujya Swamiji three times each day, at morning and afternoon darshan, which means divine sight, and in the evening arti, which is a ritual involving the flame of a lamp, during which I joined the yellow-clad boys and orange-robed sadhus, Hindu monks, to stand on the steps leading to the river's edge and sing along to the words that I didn't understand. Each evening, as we sang, I felt a hand gently reach into my chest, grab hold of my heart, my lungs, and every physical aspect of me, and carry me by my internal organs the way a mother cat carries her kittens by the skin of their necks to a plane of existence I'd never before encountered. It was not a physical plane. There were no distinct mountains or rivers or grassy fields. It was not a visual experience at all. It was an entirely different state of being. When I opened my eyes, I was still physically there on the edge of the flowing Ganga River. Yet I was carried to a different level of perspective and experience, one in which there was no yesterday, today, or tomorrow. Time wasn't linear. Simultaneous moments overlapped in a carefully woven tapestry of existence. Nor was space linear. When I opened my eyes, 
I could recognize that the legs that moved by force of my brain were standing atop some marble steps that led one after the other into the river, so I knew I was here. This was where the body stood, and yet I was not here. I was taken to a simultaneous, separate plane of existence, carried deeper and deeper by the songs Pujya Swamiji sang. Each note took me into a realm where I was both the legs that came out of my torso and the legs that came out of everyone's torso, and I was also everyone's torsos, arms, heads, and ears, and the steps on which we stood, and I was the water flowing over the marble. With a gentle shift in focus, I was all of these. After Arti, after the wave of yellow and orange-clad students and renunciants receded back into the ashram, I continued to sit, my eyes merging and melting into the water, now incandescent in the moonlight. It felt to me like there had never been a moment prior to this one. All of time was now. The twenty-five pre-India years of my life seemed a canvas on which a child had painted and I had once glimpsed and smiled at. One afternoon, as Pujya Swamiji stood to leave from the afternoon darshan, he looked down at me, still seated on the ground, waiting for my legs to regain sensation so I could stand. You can come at 6.30 a.m. tomorrow, after the prayers, he said. Come? Come where? He had already brought me to what seemed to be the furthest reaches. Where should I come? I asked in a whisper, as though my vocal cords had gone to sleep with my legs. Just come here to this room, he replied. One of the boys will bring you to see me. With that he turned and left, vanishing through the magic door into his quarters, his sleeping, eating, and meeting rooms. Beyond that door, it had seemed to me, was the land beyond the phantom toll booth, a kingdom of wisdom I'd never be able to visit. The next morning, I was up before my alarm buzzed at four o'clock. All through the prayers, which include Hindi and Sanskrit chanting, and then a Hindi discourse, I was edgy with excitement. What would it like, what would it be like, <laughs> in the inner sanctum? What would Swamiji say or do? Each previous morning, I had effortlessly entered a state of meditation. The words of the songs and the lectures were music to my ears. Not understanding Hindi was a blessing. When we don't speak a language, the language center seems to shut off and sound is processed as just sound and each word brought tears to my eyes. If I didn't understand, why was I crying? What was touching me so deeply? We process only the most superficial aspects of communication through our language centers, I believe. The rest of communication takes place elsewhere, perhaps in the body, the nervous system, or the soul. In any case, meditation came easily each morning as I was undistracted by the meaning of what was being said. The chorus of men and women on separate sides of the hall bursting forth into Hari Om as the clock tower struck five soothed my mind to stillness. On this morning, my mind was not calm. My heart beat rapidly. I couldn't lose myself or merge with the sounds. I kept looking at the clock, waiting for the prayers to end. Then a quick cup of coffee, and I'd be taken to see Swamiji. 
granted entrance into his sacred quarters for the first time. Let's pause our reading of Hollywood to Himalayas there for now. We can explore the inner sanctums of Pujya Swamiji's quarters with our dear author as we pick up the book to read next time. May that reading be peaceful. May we open our Sangha up to discuss whatever is on our hearts and minds. Dear Linda, thank you for your 23 roses tone. Aryom Dadsat. If anyone would like to continue reading with me, I'd like to read at the end of my live stream still. There's also the recordings that I clip and put on my YouTube channel. You're always welcome to check those out too. Om Satyam Om Tat Sat I like your mantra, dear John F. You've used two different ways of rendering Om which is fun. Thank you, dear Donley, and hello to everyone who joined while we were reading. That's beautiful, dear Sky Guardian. You can relate with that experience of feeling like you are everything. Good evening, dear Anna Zach. Dear G2 Infinity, <laughs> you ask, how does my voice seem to get more soothing? Or is it because it's ASMR Sunday? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. This is Brahman, this is Vayu, this is the Self, this is Truth. Donnelly, you ask, what's one memory you'd never want to lose? This one, and by that, I mean the ability to even reflect on a memory that I have at all, to have this moment where as I live, there are experiences I can cherish, regardless of what I cherish about any of those experiences. The fact that I have something to cherish at all, that is something I do not wish to lose. Thank you, Ostlending, for your quintet of tiny dinies. One for Akash. Base, one for Vayu, air, one for Dejas, fire, one for Apas, water, and one for Prithvi, earth. Yippee! <laughs> Hello, dear Liordati. 
I am unfamiliar with this Baba. But thank you for planting the seed. I love to know of great beings. There have been so many of them. Namaste, dear Sonia. And Ostlending. Thank you for your quintet of fires. No, roses. <laughs> Ah, but to the perspective of fire, it is all one, isn't it? Ashes to ashes. Ram, ram. Gandhi is, uh, is a great soul. That's why they call him Mahatma. Maha meaning great, Atma meaning soul. Mahatma, great soul Gandhi. <laughs> I heard that he, I believe on Mondays, took a vow of Mauna, which is silence. And if I were to be silent on any day, I would probably also choose Monday. <laughs> I feel very seen. Thank you, Donnelly. all of you win the battles you tell no one about. <laughs> You've heard of, your heart tells you there is a some Baba in India that only eats onions, you know. How tamasic. <laughs> I've heard of the, uh, is it alu? Potato in Hindi? Alu Baba? I know there's this one Baba that eats only potatoes. <laughs> Thank you, Anasek, for your heartbeat. Om Namah Shakti Shivaya. The only yes you ask, what is a Baba? A Baba is a general term for kind of yogi or sadhu or monk. Generally one not part of any tradition but just kind of existing on their own. And they're very spiritual. Like you'd be wandering the forest and there's just a Baba in a cave. And that Baba loves that cave. And if you talk to this Baba, you'll definitely get good vibes. Just wonder, is this Baba enlightened or crazy? And you could never tell with the Babas. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe it helps to be a little crazy. It can mean father, that's right. In a kind of similar way we might call a religious person a father. But this is even more um, loose of a term, because they don't have to be a part of any organization. They could look like like a caveman, literally. You'd say, oh, Baba, father. Because there is something holy about their presence. The, the higher self is in them. 
Ooh, another mantra. Om Kshema Karaya Namaha. Who is this? Shemakara. Shemakara. Is it the onion man? Is it the onion baba? Yes, it is. <laughs> Salutations to onion. <laughs> Thank you, Anna Zek, for your heart, me. Aryom Tatsa. John F. Thank you for your Rosa, too. Om Namo Buddhaya. Michael. Thank you for your heart, me, and Rose. Ram Ram. Taylor, dear, you share you keep making the same choice that is damaging to your well-being over and over. How can you correct it? I imagine that if this choice brought you pain immediately, then the decision would be easy like sticking your hand in fire. You might do it a couple times, but you wouldn't keep doing it if it kept bringing you pain immediately. So there must be some time in between you do it and the pain. They say that's what gets you. That which appears sweet at first, but then poison later. Whereas the best things at life appear as poison first, but then sweet later. They appear bitter initially, and then like the nectar of immortality, eventually. But when we make that decision, we just have to expand our sense of being to include what we know this leads to. If we just feel like we are going to get something pleasurable in that moment, then we forget about the pain that comes after. But if we recognize that this life is short, and no matter how long it takes for that pain to arrive, we shouldn't make this decision that leads to any pain whatsoever. That means keeping it firm in your intellect, recognizing with foresight what this leads to. The Sanskrit word for the third eye is ajna, A-J-N-Y-A, -A, ajna. And it's a word that simultaneously means vision and knowledge. Having a penetrative, <laughs> penetrative, penetrative, having a penetrating vision, I'll just put it like that, means that we are able to see what will come of this. And we keep that knowledge seated in our buddhi, in our intellect, as we make our decisions. We cannot become blinded to momentary pleasure that lasts for only so long because our soul craves infinite happiness, which is a high standard, isn't it? <laughs> it would be nice if our, if our soul had a lower standard, you know. Just the sweetness of a lollipop, then you'd be good. But no matter how many lollipops, we always are wanting more. Our soul has a high standard. It is infinite peace and happiness we're after. That can only come from something infinite too. The 
therefore we must see the temporary, the impermanent, and the transient as finite and not conducive to the ultimate joy. Dear user 224, you ask, is divine retribution a component of Hinduism? It's a good question. Tell me, what is divine retribution to you? Dear Sonia, you ask, if our gurus decided to move on from this realm, who takes over? You know the story of the circus beyond the fence. Now there were these kids who didn't have the money to join the circus and they just see all the light show happening and the laughter and the screams and the cheers beyond this fence. They're too short, they can't see over it. But this big kid is tall enough to be able to climb it. That big kid says, come here. <laughs> you come close, I will lift you up and over. And you will get to go experience the circus. So the big kid lifts the first one up, lets him down. And the other kids can hear him go, wow. Second kid comes up, picks him up, puts him over the fence. You can hear that kid too go, Oh my. Third kid picks him up. But he stays there. Big kid says. Come on. What are you waiting for? Come check out the circus. The little kid says, no, you go on ahead. I will stay here and wait for the next kid to come along so that I may pick them up as you have picked me up. Dear Christine, thank you for your heart, me. Aryon Tatsat. you angels home you are the home of angels and M you ask do you need to relinquish all material desire to be happy no just the belief that you are defined by it dear user 224 you share that for you, divine retribution is a kind of divine consequence for bad intentional actions in our lifetime. Ah. That sounds like karma. <laughs> the only difference is, is that we're the ones that create this for ourselves. And therefore, it's also us to learn from such actions so that we make our intentions purer next time. Dear the only S, you ask, do all of my answers come from my own experience or do some come from the unknown? What's the difference? <laughs> Everything I have experienced could equally be called the unknown. 
since I know not what it is which makes this experience to be what it is. It just is. Thank you, dear Anazak, for your quartet of roses. Om Brahm Bhairvai Namo Namaha. That does sound frustrating, dear Sky Guardian. Welcome back, dear Melissa. Yes, we can still enjoy all the beautiful things. Those are the gifts of this life. Beauty is a gift to the beholder. Dear Crossfires, you're feeling spooky vibes tonight in your collective, kind of unsettling. Well, Halloween is approaching, isn't it? Spooky season is on its way. Right on time. I'm sorry you're feeling unsettled, though. Alki. You ask, how can you erase your name from Yama's book like the Monkey King did to become immortal? Well, my name is Yam also, isn't it? Last time I checked, your name wasn't in my book. Do you know the story of Najiketa? Dear user 224, you ask, could divine retribution in Hinduism mean living a life of more suffering or further from human in your next lifetime like being reborn as an animal? That is a possibility. But that suffering is something that we create for ourselves. And there's always going to be grace in that no one suffers forever. And even during periods of great suffering, There will be moments of peace. The only yes, you ask. Why must you be so specific with your words to get specific answers out of me? It's a good challenge, isn't it? (laughs) It's the same challenge that people are struggling with in the new world of artificial intelligence, or as I call it, computational intelligence. You can ask this agent to learn how to play a racing game And so you reward its decisions based on how many points it gets in the racing game. But this agent discovers that there's a glitch in the game and that if you keep driving around this one car that you keep getting points for the near miss as if you drive really close to another vehicle you get the near miss bonus. And so this agent learns that to get the highest reward, all it has to do is keep driving around this car, never finishing the race, because the points just keep going up and up and up. 
though the researchers realized that what they asked of it to do was not actually what they meant. So we have to engineer just the right prompt. They get it to do what we want. Indigo, thank you for your heart, me too. Federica, you ask, what is Tiny Diny Divine Retribution? Tiny Diny is already divine. No need to. No need for it to do any sort of retribution. Tiny Diny is one. Tiny Diny is all. <laughs> I love that, dear user 224. You share that the Irish belief and origin of Halloween is that the veil between the living and the deceased becomes lifted. I love that. Saint Hallow's Eve. It is a big responsibility to be the only S, isn't it? Having to play the role of all other Fs, S's simultaneously can be quite challenging. Dear NM, you ask if I believe in neuroplastic pain, and either way, what does it tell us about our inner well-being? I've heard of neuroplasticity. I have not heard it applied to the concept of pain. Perhaps you could tell me more about that and we can explore it together. Welcome back, dear Brooke. Good evening, Kitty Fondue. Dear Kalkiji, is the story of Nachiketa the story of when Shiva killed Yama? No, I don't think so. <laughs> No, the story of Nachiketa, yes, has to do with the Nachiketa fire sacrifice. See, the story goes that this young boy, Nachiketa, had been told by his dad to go to the doorsteps of death which in Sanskrit is known as Yama. Now this kid was just like that agent in the racing game and did exactly what was being asked. So he literally went to the doorsteps of death. But death wasn't home. He was on a three-day vacation. This stubborn boy, Nachiketa, he sat on death's doorstep for three days. And when death returned, he came into the back door and he greeted all of his servants in his abode and then he saw that through the ring doorbell there was someone and he said, why didn't you let him in? So he went outside himself and he said, my poor boy, you have been on my doorstep for three days and I haven't answered. The lack of hospitality allow me to grant you one boon for each day that you spent here or night. A boon means a kind of uh, wish. Nachiketa said, for my first wish, I would like for my father to be forgiven. Of all of his sins, for his karma to be dissolved. For my second wish, I would like to know the secret of how to enter the highest heaven. And third, for my third wish, I would like to know 
how to attain moksha, liberation, immortality. Now Yama was happy to grant the first two wishes, the tastu. It is so. But that third wish, he said, are you sure? You wouldn't want a whole bunch of gold? No. You don't want a whole kingdom to rule over? No. How about a, a very beautiful girl to uh, fall in love with you? You are a young boy. You are at the age where you are starting to be attracted to other people. You would like to fall in love with someone very beautiful? I can make it so. No. What about the power to levitate? Not interested? Would you like to be able to read people's minds? No, he said. You do want to know how to astral project? Ajigeta said, No, sir. Do you want to know how to... Uh, death was running out of ideas, things to give him. Ajigeta said, All I want to know is how to attain ultimate freedom from suffering. So eventually, Yama said, as you wish, it is so, and he told them the secret. So, if one wishes to learn the secret that Nachiketa did, one has to forego all of these things, because Liberation will not be given for as long as we are still looking for it in material things. Namaste, dear Sonia. Om. Like Halloween G2 Infinity. Anthony, you wondered what the question of the day is. Today I wondered what is something kind you are going to do for your body or mind tomorrow. Liordati, you wonder, are good and bad equal? They are equal parts of our life, but they don't have to be because we can find the good in the bad and then there becomes only goodness. The guy from TikTok, you asked, is there a correlation between pain and spiritual growth? Pain is like Pain is like, uh, like an espresso shot. It's a very powerful form of energy which you can use. But I wouldn't recommend drinking only espresso shots to do all that you want to do. I wonder if I've experienced any siddhis. The only power that I feel has been a spiritual grace in my life the ability to feel my heartbeat in any part of my body. And wherever I place that heartbeat, I feel love and healing take place. Whether it's in my tummy, 
during a tummy ache, my head during a headache, my finger when I get a paper cut, my neck when there's tension there, I feel my heart beat in those places. Dear Kalkiji, you ask, do we know what Yama looks like while alive? <laughs> what does the Lord of Death look like? You may ask, what does the Lord of Life look like? And just take the negative space around that. Oh, that's funny, dear Anna Zek. Much love, dear Alexander. DJ, you share you're going to meditate in the morning tomorrow. I'm happy to hear that. The only yes, you're doing things that are good for your body, such as workouts. Guardian says you can keep slapping yourself and see if you grow spiritually. <laughs> I'm sure you will. As soon as you realize that you don't have to hurt yourself. As there is enough pain going around already. <laughs> Dear Melanie, you shared that you took a bubble bath and snuggled with your kiddos and watched a movie. I love that. Tomorrow a nap just for you. I'm happy to hear that too. Jared, you ask, how would you approach talking to your mom who has cut you off due to her religion that she was raised in? I would ask her, to you, what is the essence of the divine? You know, if you imagine what that God is like, what would it feel like? What kind of aspects would be there? Would she describe it as light? Would she describe it as love? Would she describe it as compassion, maybe knowledge, wisdom, rather. And you can say, if, if God is all of those things to you, if you feel like I am becoming more like that to you, then I must be heading the same place that you are, just from a different direction. That's all. Do you see me, O oh Mother, as becoming more of a light, more of a love, more wise? Because all of those things are found in the very same thing that you believe in. Thank you, dear angel, for your tiny, tiny that you sent a few moments ago. Yahoo! Dear alien, thank you for your subscription. Arion Tatsat May I be able to be there with you on this journey of life 
to the extent that I can be. Aryon Tadsad. Alkiji, thank you for another rose. Ram Ram. What a wonderful opportunity for you, dear Anasek. Thank you, Kev, for your heart, me, and Rose as well. Arion Tatsat. Namaste, dear Craig R.G. Sonia, you ask, do I reach the higher samadhis? You're still learning. I'm still learning, too. I... I'm still figuring out the basics of life. I think I leave... more profound kinds of meditations until after I figure out how to be just a kind person. I'm still figuring out how to do that. <laughs> I can be a better son, a better brother. You know, that's my meditation right now. I don't worry about transcendental states of consciousness. I think it's transcendental to even be here at all. Be a son, be a brother, be a friend to people. That is my absorption. Alexander, you ask, why do some say, do not go towards the light? Because you are that light. It is your duty to shine in the darkness. That is where you are needed. You need not take a flashlight into a room that already has its lights on. Your nature is the abode of light. And your destiny is to illuminate the dark. Thank you for knowing. They are not me, dear Anthony. And for informing me. Everything I do is for free. Thank you again, dear Cav, for the heart me and rose. Hare Krishna and Anthony for your rose too. Hare Om Tatsad. Thank you, Anazak, for your finger heart too. Jaya Sita Ram. Namaste, Sandra. Um, Valeria, you share your confession is that you care too much of what other people think of you and it causes anxiety. That comes from a vulnerable place. Thank you for feeling safe to share that here. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. Oh, me? That's my impression of Marge. Melissa, you share you do meditation every morning and you like meditation a lot. I love that. I'm happy to hear that for you. S. McCormick, you ask, how do you meditate? By allowing myself space to be here. The only S. You ask, how can you manage having your mom in your life? 
if she brings you down with her negative speech or emotions. By being grateful for all that she has given you, such as this body, and saying, Mom, you have been so selfless that you've given me everything in this life. I don't need to take your emotions though, you can keep that. Those are yours. I'll create my own, thank you. <laughs> and if she is truly your mother, all she wants for you is your happiness. If you can express to her that there is a way to make you more happy, and that's by respecting some boundary, then she will have to listen if she is your mother. Your gardening gray guardie. We didn't have a show and tell today. No one shared anything today. <laughs> if any of you have something you wanted to share, do check out the link tree in my bio. There's a form to fill out where you can drop images, videos, audio files, PDFs. I'm looking for um, maybe a picture that you found beautiful on a walk. Maybe you're painting something new. Maybe uh, you, you made a little poem. Perhaps you did a school project that you feel other people could learn from too. Maybe you have a talent that you think is pretty cool and you would like others to appreciate too. I would love to see it. And today we didn't have anything to share. We've gone through them all. But we will be listening to Guru Tanit at the end of our live stream today. By your request. Thank you, dear Kalki Ji. Ram Ram. Cody Jane, thank you for your heart me a few minutes ago. Aryon Tatsat. And Malesmi, thank you for your heart me and Rose. Om Som Som Mai Namaha. S. McCormick, you ask, what is my perspective of death? All I know is that if I die tomorrow, many people would miss me. And so I hope to bring as much love to them for as long as I am alive. Dear Nomad Dragon Designs, you ask, how many malas do I have? I've got uh, one made out of Rudraksha, one made of Tulasi wood, one made of black agate, and one made of clear quartz. But the greatest mala is the one made of our breath, with each inhale and exhale making the bead and time our thread. The only yes, you ask, how do you overcome your fear of the dark? By reconciling it with your light. And as you shine it on the dark, you recognize that the monsters only existed in our mind. We had created the danger out of the endless possibility that could be. So if we're going to tell ourselves stories about what's outside of our experience, let us at least make them good stories. Born by lightning. Thank you for that, Rose. Um, sum, sum, I, uh, no, wait. 
That's not a mantra. Om Sum Suryai Namaha. Salutations to the sun. Dear Ushabai, thank you for your hanging light still. Aryom Tatsat and Existential.em, thank you for your rose. Om Namo Rudraya. Dear Kalkiji, you ask, who do I think the next avatar of Vishnu is in the Satya Yuga? That's a lot of Sanskrit. <laughs> I hope that you are, dear Kalkiji. Even if you don't have a many armed form with a discus on one finger and a conch in the other, may you become that force of dharma, of righteousness, to illuminate this dark world. Dear Don, you wonder if I think the stars in space are alive, have awareness. All I know is that it is not that anything has awareness, but it is within awareness that you will find everything. Not even this body has awareness, but this awareness certainly has a body. This awareness is not localized, but the body is. In that awareness we find many things, including our stars. Welcome back, dear Marlin. Hello, Judah girl. And then you wonder of my hair care routine. It's very simple. Shampoo. Conditioner. In that order. Don't do it the other way around. <laughs> mm. Alexander, you ask, what would say attributed me to attain the state within self? Was it the Bhagavad Gita? I find that scripture affirms what we already know deep down. Almost like we give ourselves permission to be peaceful when we find something in our experience reflect that peace that's already there. But it was not enough. One of the greatest motivators of peace for me is because I know what it's like to not be so peaceful. And every time that I am agitated, it just doesn't feel like me, you know? Negativity doesn't suit me. And I know what it's like to wear that as our clothing. And once we decide to undress at a peril of negativity, which we smother our bodies with, and what is left is something already pure and pristine, without needing to be hidden, masked, or unseen. I am Mariah Carey fan. You share that you have a lot of Mariah Carey stuff. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Lele Mor, thank you for your trio of roses too. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Dear Sky Guardian, you share that you saw a beautiful onion. Can you share it for the show and tell? I would genuinely love to see a beautiful onion.
Dear Judah Girl, you share that you took an amazing black and white close-up of a bee with pollen all over. You highlight gold. You like bees. I like bees too. I pet one today. Mm -hmm. Dear Marlin, you share that sadly you don't think your mom's your mom because she would push her beliefs on you. Where do you find a kind of motherly love where you feel like you grow in their presence without expectations and that your feelings are validated? Is there somewhere else you find that in your life at this time? Riannan, you share that you just dropped some new tunes. Well, I'd be honored to share it if you feel comfortable allowing us. I like the way you put that, dear Greg RG. I know you guys are so cool. Please send us nuggets of your magnificence. <laughs> dear Anna Zach, you have a feeling that I'm not quite okay? As if you're telling me something. Um, well, let me check. Still got two ears that can hear you, two eyes to see you, nose to smell the flowers I may give you, a mouth to use my words to be able to affirm you, legs that can take me to everywhere I need to go, tummy that digests food, heart still beating, lungs still breathing. I think I'm okay. Hello, Amanda. I like your acronym for fear, dear Judah Carl. False evidence appearing real. That is profound. <laughs> Kalki G, you ask, who's after Kalki? Nah. Maybe it starts all over again. And the end becomes the beginning. Mm. Dear Sonia, you share that attachment and detachment to our children is the biggest challenge for you at the moment. You can be attached to loving them. but it will hurt if we are attached to anything that we will have to say goodbye to one day. But the love we offer them is something that we do eternally. Just as your children would want to hear from you that your love will always be with them. Wouldn't it be true for you too? Dear user 224, you ask, could I speak of which period or year of my life I felt the most challenged? I think every year gives me a new challenge that's bigger than the last. And in a strange way, I begin to look forward to the challenges that come year after year. Just like a video game, I want the first level to be easy, the second level to be a little harder, the third to be even more so. And as I keep playing this game, I would like for it to continue to add an aspect of challenge so that I'm always learning and able to apply what I have learned so far. That's what video games taught me. Galkiji. Thank you for the rose you sent to Ram Ram and Gabriella. Thank you for your rose. Hare Krishna. Om. And Rainbolt Mom. 
Thank you. Thank you for your hand heart. Here's some for you. Thank you, dear Sandra. Dear Kalki Ji, a genuine question before Maya hides you. How do you activate the Sudarshana Chakra? <laughs> this is the, the discus. The most powerful weapon in the universe, some may say. Ah, well I ask you. What is it that you may spin such that it may create change all around you? Upon the axle of your life, what revolves so that the more energy we give it, the less the challenges around us appear to be daunting? You're the only us. You ask, is it possible to be infinitely joyful and blissful inside? Well, of course. But how do we get that from within to without? When all of our senses are pointed outward, how do we get to experience that bliss inside if we don't bring it outward? You are welcome to share your videos, dear The Only S. Maybe we can watch uh, a little bit of one if they are too long. Mm -hmm. Yes, crossfires. Mm -hmm. For most people, it's possible to survive without eating meat. It is more challenging, I will say, but it also adds different challenges. My mother, for example, has severe anemia and the only way that she's found to continue being alive really, since it's that serious from our family, is for her to eat meat. I don't, but I don't judge her for it because I know that she has to do what she has to do in order for her iron levels to be livable. Mm -hmm. But for most people, you will find a lot of health benefits, assuming you keep track of your amino acids and your vitamins. Probably nowadays, because our food is generally less nutritious, you might have to do a blood works occasionally to see what your levels are in, in, your, in your veins, whether your B12 is high enough, whether your vitamin D is high enough. It's important to make sure that you are getting enough nutrients. But there is a reason that, generally, in spiritual paths, at some point the body itself becomes resistant to certain food. The body itself begins to say, this is no longer serving me. And it makes sense if we are incorporating violence into our system. You could imagine from a spiritual perspective that that would have an effect on us too once you get to the point of being sensitive enough to that. But your body is your body, your diet is your choice, and I respect you for taking care of yourself in the way that you know how. That sounds beautiful, Amanda.
Thank you, dear Viber Zero, for your team bracelet and heart me. Never too late to set our intentions for our day, dear Rafa. Dear Sonia, you wish you could send a million roses. It is your wish that is the greatest gift. Thank you for that. My goodness, Akoma, you sure you bought nine volumes of the Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita and the Sri Isopanishad. You are getting down to business. <laughs> Very good. Indigo, thank you for your ice cream cone too. The least we can do, whatever we put in our body, is to just find some amount of um, gratitude for the life that has lived so that we may live too. It's the least that we can do. Mm -hmm. We can thank our food. It's a miracle that we can take something and through an intelligent process incorporate it into our body and it becomes our blood, our bone, our muscle, it becomes our heart, our lungs, even parts of our brain, our skin, our eyes. You are what you eat at the level of the body. Just a moment before putting anything in our mouth, we recognize that this is to become my body. you ask if you can join the live. I'm not sure if I know how to do that. I'm not streaming from my phone. I'm streaming from my my laptop. And there's a different interface how it works, but you are already a part of my live stream. Thank you, dear Indigo, for your ice cream cone again. Rum, rum. Mm. We need to do more research on women's bodies and immune systems. They are fascinating and go through many changes that we still have yet to understand. The only S you ask, what's my understanding of the quantum realm? Well, as the quantum physicists tell us, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand. But does that mean if I say I don't understand that I do? <laughs> or would that be affirming the consequent? Dear Marlon, you share that your godmother, your HR manager from your previous job, is one whom you find as a mother figure. I'm happy to hear that. Do 
Dear Kalki Ji, you ask, what's the next sutra you can read? You ask the Buddha, but he doesn't really talk back. That means he gave you an answer. You said, oh Lord Buddha, from what can I gain wisdom? And the response was silence. Therefore, it is within the meaning of silence that the next answers will be found. Good night, Melissa. Cody Jane, you ask if I would eat lab grown meat? Um. Well, if my mother came to me and said, please eat this, I'm not sure I could, I could refuse any, f any food from my mother because it would break her heart more than it would affect me. <laughs> but as it's been quite some time, since going vegetarian, I've discovered that I don't even crave meat in the same way anymore. Like I'm not even looking for things that taste like meat. I enjoy food that's just different from meat. And so I'm not sure if I would really be hungry for it, even if it was uh, more ethical. Because for me, by the way, it's not entirely an ethical decision. It also has to do with the way that my body processes the food and that affects my mind. And I find the most clear mind from simple foods. And molecularly, meat is very complex. The kind of enzymes that the body secretes in order to break down the protein structure of animal tissue and fat is quite intensive of a process. Whereas other foods at the cellular and molecular level are simpler. And one could make the argument that that frees up a different kind of energy so that not so much energy is used in the digestive process itself. Anazek, thank you for your quintet of roses. Arion Tatsa. Dear Kalki Ji, Thank you for your quartet of roses and another quintet of them. Undum Dargai Namaha. The only S. You wonder what happened to my girlfriend? Well, I do not know which one you speak of. As during my internet presence, there were a couple. However, as of this moment, my heart is full for the love that I can give everyone. And I'm grateful for every relationship that I've had intimately. They've all taught me something unique. Right now, I feel my heart is best expressed when it gives love equally. So you could say I'm single, but I don't feel alone. <laughs> Hippie heart, Charity. Thank you for your tiny, tiny as well. Yahoo! 
and Ali Hen. Thank you for your finger heart as well. Ram Ram. very interesting Megatroni <laughs> it's good to eat wholesome and tasty foods our taste buds have certainly evolved to inform us about what is nutritious naturally of course but now our shelves are stocked with things that trigger those taste buds. Like, uh, like picking a lock. You may get the door open. And if it was locked, it might imply that you must have the key. That you're supposed to be here. But there is a way of opening that door and getting in without necessarily having a key. Though too, our tongue contains little locks that once the molecules fit in, that tells our body, all right, that can go in. But some of them are just picking the lock rather than actually holding the key. Hello, dear Gaia. <laughs> Greg RG, you like happy foods, like pancakes with smiles made of whipped cream. Whenever there's a, a face on my plate, I always make the smile turn up. On a burger, if I'm putting the ketchup, one squish for the eye, one squish for the other eye, one long squish for the smile. You gotta make it with love, right? That's the most important ingredient. Food not made with love may grow our body, but how can we expect to grow Spiritually, if we don't have that love. Dear Kalkiji, one more question. Are you Vishnu or just delusional? And who am I if all is Brahma? We are just tiny little Vishnus or Brahmas. We are their two-harmed form. <laughs> you know, the reason that Vishnu is seen with so many arms, but one heart, is because we have so many bodies as humanity, but yet one conscious spirit that pervades us all. Tacoma, thank you for your hat and mustache. Om Sum Surya Namaha. The only S you ask is being careful with my wording hard to do. Or would I say it's natural to speak more consciously? It certainly requires effort. Because the first thing we want to say is not always the kindest thing we can say. Nor is it necessarily the most true. But it does feel very natural to have a kind of rhythm that makes room for space in between words or sentences. 
So much is spoken indirectly through the silence. And every time that I choose the words that appear to bring more pain, more harm than healing, then I take that as a grace for me to be able to choose even better words next time. The link below. Thank you for your trio of rosas. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Annapoles, thank you for your non-act of roses. Um Bram Bayarvai Namo. Dear Jake, you share you're in a video game soul journey of each lifetime being more difficult than the last. Will it end? I suppose you have to beat the final boss. Thank you, Tacoma, for your finger heart and meerkat. Imagine gifting someone a meerkat. Please, take this meerkat. I would accept it. Jaya Sitaram. Lelemor, thank you for your team bracelet and heart me too. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> Dear Gaia, you ask how does math help solve the universe? You'd like to mathematically find your star-crossed lover? <laughs> I love the phrase star-crossed lover because the chances that two stars cross paths is astronomically low. So low in fact that when our local galaxy Andromeda collides with our galaxy, the Milky Way, in the next four billion years or so, it is unlikely that any pair of the trillions of stars will actually collide with each other because there's just so much space. It's like the whole galaxy will just perfectly move through each other. How does math solve our universe? It doesn't. It makes the problems, doesn't it? <laughs> does math provide problems or answers? It seems to provide problems. <laughs> you go to math class and you receive a new problem rather than a new answer. Anyone can be your lover if you are stubborn enough to sit through all of their faults. If we are waiting for someone that has no faults, then we are waiting for God. <laughs> so you might as well become a nun. Otherwise, you can make anyone into a lover as long as there is consent. Communication and trust. Thank you, Angel, for your team bracelet. Did I thank you, Maria, for your heart me? I will thank you again just in case. 
राधे ओ राधे Maria thank you for your team bracelet and music play Jaya Sachitanandam Elemor thank you for another team bracelet too Jaya Premananda that means victory to divine love and thank you Roxy for your heart me as well The only ask you ask am I at the point where I can't tell the difference between me and anyone else like Sadguru Reality exists at levels and at one level I am distinct from you and it's not like coming to the level in which we are one somehow dissolves the layer below it what dissolves is our identification with it but it still appears that we are different even if you are sadguru you have to acknowledge that if a sadguru eats a lot of strawberries and nuts he's not going to expect that uh, that you are going to the washroom for him in 6 hours or however long it takes for those nuts and strawberries to go through your system and that when i think a thought you don't expect that thought to appear in everyone's mind equally from the standpoint of maya material existence we are separate from the standpoint of brahman we are one but does that mean that one is real and one is not they are both real just from different views what matters not is the identification with maya or brahman as it is the understanding of both of their roles and if we understand the roles of each level of our being then we can play any of them at any time your christina you share you're getting a lot of trauma trembles lately it does sound scary mm-hmm. may you feel safe here last night we did a listening to a very old audio of ram das's guru neem karoli baba chanting the name of the divine ram 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 <laughs> it's funny hazard cider math provides answers for questions we didn't need to ask <laughs> you reject the notion that you are waiting for god g2 infinity says at least god is always here no waiting necessary thank you dear takoma for your donut and 369 roses ari om tat sat Dear user 224, you ask if I have a favorite star and constellation. Do I stargaze? Or well, when I'm surrounded by so many bright people like you, I feel like I am already amidst the constellation of light-giving 
beings in this universe. And whichever star I look at becomes my favorite. Dear Kalki G, can you have advice for what's next on your sadhana? <laughs> Sadhana can be so simple. Sadhana can mean remembering that this universe didn't have to make you, but it did. That must make you pretty special. There are brilliance of galaxies Brilliance of stars in each galaxy. Each star can be a solar system of a dozen planets. And just on this planet alone is how many trillions of forms of life. And that's just in this moment. Imagine all of the time that could exist in this universe. And yet this universe in all of its glory required you to complete it in this moment. Just keeping this in mind can be a sadhana. Guy Guardian, you drank too much coffee, you can't sleep. Mm. If only we could drink so much sleep that we don't coffee. Only we could get enough sleep so that we feel energized enough that in our day we don't need coffee. Michael, you ask, what roles do I play in my life? Well, I'm a brother, a son, friend, a playmate with my dear cats, and a food giving a food giver to them too. I am a gardener. I am a speaker. I am a walker. I am a breather. I am a thinker. I am an eater. I am a sleeper. And I am a dreamer. <laughs> whatever I find myself engaging in, try to be the best I can at that, given the knowledge I have, the possibilities available. Humanity is about to get its first moon. Well, talk about a new moon. Its first new moon. <laughs> just a little guy, just a little asteroid saying, hey, I'm here to join the party. I like that. Your guy, you sure you meant you reject the notion of any lover, and you are waiting for God. Uh, that is a kind of lover you don't have to wait long for. Because his love has arrived long before we ever realized it. Thank you, Anazek, for your pair of finger hearts. Ram, Ram. Alkiji, thank you for your rose till. Om Maing Saraswatiai Namaha. Goodbye, dear Anazek. 
I am happy to have you here always. Nomad, you ask, what is my favorite plant? Of all the little creatures that pop up on Mother Earth to blossom, I find that the human flower is capable of the most growth. But I have particular love for Tulasi Devi. Takoma, thank you for your friendship necklace as well. Randhi, Randhi. And Anazek, thank you for your trio of roses as well. Jai Sitaram. Dear Kiwi, hello. You are going through a rough patch right now. You share that your brother was just sent to jail for life and you need help. That sounds very difficult for you. that love extend past the boundaries which might exist physically. May that love extend past the mistakes we may have made along the way. And may that love bring you closer than ever before, despite the lack of physical proximity. Dear Kodar, you ask if I like tacos, and do I find inner peace within a soft taco shell? I had that choice last night, actually. My mother and sister made tacos, and I was presented with a hard taco shell or a soft taco wrap. I had decided to break up the hard taco shell and make a taco salad instead. <laughs> so I chose the hard one. But I did not let that hardness be what's on the surface and instead use that as texture or a substantial component within Taco Dharma. <laughs> Michael, you ask, what are my favorite foods? When I was younger, the only two foods my mother could get me to eat were actually three foods were plums, ice cream, and french fries. <laughs> and my mother worked very hard to get me to like other foods. And now, I always order something new, every restaurant I go to. I always get what I haven't tried before. If I can. I find something that I like about everything, and I make that my favorite for the moment. cliche, you shared that you had a thought about life. Either we should die trying or try dying. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. I think you've just created a sequel to Shakespeare's To Be or Not To Be. 
you try dying or die trying. <laughs> Galaki Ji, you had asked, what's a more powerful mantra than Ram that can purify demons I can gift you with? The power comes from that which you invest in it. The investment of power is what gives it the ability to make changes in your life. You could chant potato, 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 pickle, tomato. And if you gave it the power that you give to Ram, Om, Arihi, Krishna, etc., and it would create miracles in your life. Ultimately, it's the sentiment that we carry in our heart. We have to fall in love with a mantra so one pointedly that we give it the power of creation, preservation, destruction. Become intimate with each part of the sound, with your tongue rolling back in retroflex, and the air rushing past the tip of your tongue to instill a vibration carried forth by your voice in the and the relaxation of that tongue as it drops back towards your teeth and the release of air to produce the ah uh, and finally the closing of the mouth and the bridge of the back of our tongue and our soft palate to produce the sacred and auspicious Anunasika, that before sound, nasalization, mm, all together, we lose ourselves in each component, discovering a symphony of symbolisms there for us to dissolve and we find within that sound a reflection of all that has been is and will be we give ourselves to this mantra and it becomes powerful thank you nunya for the heart me you had sent are krishna and Tacoma for your nine rosas and quartet of roses. Jaya Sita Ram. Dear Kelsey, thank you for the heart me that you sent to. Om Dum Dargai Namaha. Marlin. You ask if you are wrong in feeling more of a mother figure in your previous HR manager than your own mother. You are blessed to find a mother in a place which other people may not have. That is the universe's gift to you. Thank you, Kalki, uh, <laughs> for your rose. Ram, Ram. Michael, you had asked, what brings me a sense of peace in these challenging times? The fact that there is a challenge for me to bring my own peace to solve. It is through these challenging times that we discover a resource of inner peace 
so that we may use as we attend to these challenges which require us to exercise that inner peace. Hello, dear Donsuela. Wonderful to have you here again. Thank you, Asad, for being here. Brass fires, you share, it seems like it'll always be a battle between light and dark. When will it ever stop? Ah. Why stop the greatest story that has ever been told? Light cannot exist without a space for it to travel through. What appears as dark is merely the medium for that light to flow. <laughs> That's right, Andrew. Michael, you had asked, how do I deal with sadness and anger in this beautiful world? By asking, do I want to add to the sadness, anger, or the beauty? That is the question. Namaste, CB. Dear Bubbles, you ask if I can read the 20th verse of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita until I feel like stopping. Jayate Muriate Va Kadachin Nayam Bhutva Bhavita Vana Bhuyaha Ajo Nitya Shashvato Yam Burano Na Hanyate Hanyamane Shari Re for the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time this has not come into being nor does it ever come out that one is unborn eternal ever existing and primeval one is not slain when the body is. <laughs> Hope you can excuse my improvisation. Thank you, dear angel, for the heart me you had sent. Hare Krishna. So you only ask, you ask, when will I host an in-person meet? As you would love to meet me in person one day. <laughs> when the time is right. Please say thank you for your naughty chicken. I will happily take this naughty chicken off your hands. And for your pair of hat mustaches. And thank you for your tiny diny too. Yippee! <laughs> and dear Kalki G, thank you for the rose you had sent as well. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Michael, you had asked. 
Are my family members supportive of my inquiry of powerful awakenings? I am very grateful that my family um, has certainly allowed me the space to be able to discover myself freely without expectation. I can only hope to create that space for others to Dear Cliche, you share that it's raining all day today. You need to go out. How do you not let the rain affect you on your bike? Pelotron. Yeah, they have those. They have a bike that's on the inside. <laughs> But I actually love going out in the rain. I assume as long as you wipe down the rain from your bike afterwards, you need not fear of rust. So too, we are allowed to be in situations which are apparently uncomfortable, so long as when we return to a safe place, we leave all that uncomfort outside so that we do not rust under the weathering of these attachments which stick to us. Thank you, Cliche, for the little crown. <laughs> and Luna. Namaste, kick it. Lisa, you wonder, how am I not verified? Am I even real? That is the question. Honest answer, to be verified requires something like four independent news organizations to have a written article about you which is unfortunate because I think a verification would help those who unfortunately are being taken advantage of by the impersonation happening on this app as I don't want anyone to um, be scammed in that way as everything I do is free and that's the real verification mark. Because if I ever ask you for something, it must not be me. <laughs> because I only wish to give to you and not receive. The greatest gift is in the ability to give anything at all. Because that means I must have enough myself. And that is a blessing. Thank you, Cliche, for your donut. Or as a topologist would say, thank you for your coffee cup. <laughs> Aryom Tatsat. Anthony is still wondering what the question of the day is. I had told you before. <laughs> but perhaps I'm so behind that you left before I could answer again. I apologize for that. Today I wonder... What is something you are going to do tomorrow to be able to be kind to your body and mind? Cliche, thank you for your friendship necklace too. Aryom Tatsat. Kyle, you asked, why do bees have sticky hair? It's because they use honeycombs. <laughs> Thank you, Starlight Wow, for your flowers. Rum, rum. And cliche. Thank you for your friendship necklace. 
and 14 ice cream cones. Um, dum, dar, gaid, I love your questions, dear Kaokiji. You need not ever apologize for being inquisitive or curious. O oh, Divine Maze, you ask, how can you know someone has truly changed? You never do. And that's where trust comes in. But it takes many years for that trust to repair, especially if a, such a deep and sacred boundary was crossed. But if their actions reflect their words, regardless of whether you are validating them or not, if they have found enough validation from within for their behavior to change, then you may ask yourself if you are ready to open up in the same way. But even if they're doing everything right, that choice is always yours to make. And you don't have to be ready ever to trust that side again. Thank you, dear cliche, for your... Yes, I think I thanked you for these 14 ice cream cones. My, many, much too many ice cream cones for me to eat all at once. We'll have to share it. May you have a wonderful bike in the rain. Gabriella, thank you for your heart of me. I do like ice cream. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Dagoma, thank you for your good night too. And may you have a wonderful night. Om Dum Dargai Namaha. Dear Kalkiji, you ask, do I know about Turiya, the fourth state, beyond waking, dreaming, and deep sleep? Hmm. I made a video in which I referenced that recently. Turiya, the fourth state, is that one which is pr present and pervasive throughout all three states, throughout waking, dreaming, and deep sleeping, Toriya is that witness before whom appears wakefulness, dream, and deep sleep. Dear Rainbolt Mom, thank you for your friendship necklace too. Arihi Om that sounds very delicious, medium rare. Banana and brown sugar ice cream. Mm. Rainbow Mom, do you share that you are walking in nature tomorrow morning, hoping for rain, as that would be the icing on the cake? I love that. That is a surefire way of being kind to your body and mind. X-Ray, you share that you want to start meditating as a daily thing, but you can't get yourself to stick to it. That's okay. You meditate as often as you feel is possible. And for the times that you are not, May that be allowed to, because consistency is formed in your allowance to have time to get back in at the ac on the action. Every time you miss a day doing something you want to, the moment you forgive yourself is the moment you allow yourself to return to it next time. 
because you don't have to be perfect. And Iris Live, you had asked, how can someone achieve a state of contentment or happiness in every moment? By recognizing that happiness has always been there, even when it didn't feel like it, your movie of life is one which the soul enjoys deep down, even during the most terrifying moments that was already paving your destiny to be able to learn something new about yourself later. You wouldn't watch a scary movie if it wasn't scary. You wouldn't watch a sad movie if it wasn't sad. You wouldn't watch an action movie if there was nothing to fight. You would not watch any movie which had no conflict in it. In fact, you can enjoy the conflict of a movie because you know it's what creates the plot. The plot of your life is the sadness, the fear, the anger, the upset, the torment. And just as you are free from the action on the screen, your soul is free from the action at the level of the body or mind. When you miss that bus, maybe because the universe wants to know what it feels like to sit there in the rain. When you experience that breakup, maybe the universe wants to feel what it's like to discover your independence. When you experience that trauma, maybe the universe wants to know what it's like to grow from that and become a role model for others and pave the way for love and healing. Maybe everything that you go through at a deep enough level, the universe is saying, I'm blessed to be able to have this story so that I get to experience all of life. If one can realize that, and each situation becomes one in which happiness blossoms. While you're sad, while you're angry, while you're afraid, no matter what you're feeling, happiness can be found there. And when you discover happiness, the sadness doesn't go away nor does the anger, the fear, or any other feeling. The discovery of happiness doesn't change any part of our world. It enhances every part. Dear X-Ray, you had asked, how do you forgive yourself for that? As you feel like you can't, because you feel a lot of guilt in that moment, like when you miss meditation. What is meditation, if not a state of just allowing yourself to be as you are? You're not running after anything. You're not running away from anything. Just have a kind of love and acceptance for the person you are in this moment. Therefore, the meditative thing to do would be to 
to allow yourself to be as you are when you're not meditating as much as you want to. And then even that moment becomes a meditation. Thank you the link below for your 11 rosas. Ram, Ram. Dear B, you ask, what I say most religion leads to one ideology. I believe that whatever path you are on, if you allow yourself to embark on it, we will all see each other arrive at the same destination, which is the truth of ourself. There are many paths up a mountain, and as long as you are going higher, you will eventually reach its peak. The goal of all religions, all philosophies, ideologies, faiths and traditions is to take you higher. You just have to be willing to put in the effort to take that step upwards rather than to retreat back down the mountain into familiar territory. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. X-ray, you ask, but don't you have to sit down and focus on your breath while meditating? Or let you rephrase, can I tell you what meditation is? Meditation is finding stillness. And if you believe that you are defined by the world, then you'll do everything you can to try to make the world still. <laughs> you try to get everything around you to be in the right way. But when you give up on that, you recognize that you are something distinct from this world. As long as you identify with the body, then meditation to you means trying to get the body still. Trying to make it in such a way it is perfectly still. But when you give up on that, you realize yourself to be distinct from the body. And for as long as you are defined by your thoughts and your mind, Meditating to you means trying to make the mind still. Making every thought perfectly in such a way to be still. And when you give up on that, <laughs> you see. We bring ourselves more inward until we discover our self that is already still. That self which does not need to be made still because it already is. Then there is no moment which you are separate from stillness. Whether the world is buzzing sensations in your body are whirring, your mind is chattering, because you found a different kind of stillness, it doesn't require changing anything that occurs to you.
but rather existing as a witness to whom all this occurs. Dear Zabik, thank you for your rosa too. My friend, Ram Ram. Romy, you ask, did I grow up with the spirit of Osho? Mm. He's quite the character, isn't he? <laughs> Who knows what strings are being pulled from regions of this universe? which we are locked out of perceiving. But Osho had certainly given me an addition to my experience much later in life. As have many teachers, controversial or not, Thank you, dear X-Ray, for your rose. Arion Tatsat. That's right, it does feel weird, X-Ray. To observe that weirdness, just as you would observe everything else. Become the observer of all that is, especially the weirdness. Let the weirdness occur to you. Let all sensations occur to you. Mm -hmm. Embrace the weird and unknown. <laughs> Dear Crossfires, you ask, if I'm ever feeling up to it, could I do a live while I'm walking in nature? If I have the internet connection, sure. Although I can't promise that being in nature, I will have the most stable connection. As it is something I have tried before in the forest around my house. Unfortunately, the cellular connection around where I live is not the strongest. Wi-Fi, no problem. Well, little problems here and there but I like your idea and I will consider it thank you dear cliche namaste x-ray you ask if I can make Sanskrit lessons you know I don't know if I know enough Sanskrit to be able to teach it. I just know a little bit. Sanskrit is so vast and wonderful. I'm still exploring its soundscape, let alone how they can be put together to form words and how those words can be put together to form sentences. <laughs> but if there's any Sanskrit word or phrase that I share here that you would like to know more about, I would be happy to explore it with you. <laughs> no, dear Kalki Ji, I have not explored your profile. But if you, if you wish, you are welcome to ask of me this. Dear user 8888, thank you for sharing something so vulnerable here, as I know it's a big step to be even able to talk about it, let alone acknowledge it, and especially in the in a public space, and I'm glad you feel safer to do so. How do you deal with compulsive eating 
as it started after your father died when you were 17? There was a beautiful quote from the author of our book, Sadhvi Bhagavati Saraswati. I'm wondering if I can find it for you. Our author struggled with an eating disorder. I imagine it might be a different experience, but one that can be relatable in some ways. He wrote something beautiful, and I'm wondering if I can find it for you. Otherwise, I'll have to paraphrase it. I'm just going to give myself a minute to try to find it. If not, it's not so big of a deal. Yes, here it was. I learned to say, you can't eat his love or throw up your pain. No matter how much you put in your body, he isn't coming back. We may try to fill that space or extricate the pain, but one day may that space turn its face to you and say, I am not empty, I am open. Thank you for your drops of love, dear Krillweed. Good night, Nomad. That's right, Jim. I identify as Weird Al. <laughs> You're wondering about this. This is, uh, Rudraksha. These are seed stones from the Rudraksha tree. There used to be fruit around them. They are called so because Rudra means the one who roars existence in and out of being. The very ancient name for Maheshvara, uh, Shiva, the destroyer, as the one who roars. I believe etymologically, roar somehow comes from Rudra. Also the word rude, if you're being rude, <laughs> has that very uh, aggressive kind of expression to it. I guess the ancient ones felt at some level that this universe was like a roar, a roar of being, and the personification of which they called Rudra, the one who roars. Aksha means eye or, or the tears that come from an eye. So Rudraksha means the tears of the one who roars. And so, they are considered holy 
or sacred and they're used in meditation. You might ask, how can we meditate for a certain amount of time without relying on technology? Because to some extent, meditation means withdrawing from our dependencies. Did people in ancient times just, you know, hang a, hang a rock with a rope over a tree and have a counterweight that was just slightly lighter so that as they meditate, the rock slowly drops towards them and they'd calibrate it so after an hour, bonk, they'd go, oh, okay, I'm done meditating. Maybe some of them did, but most of them used a rosary, also known as a mala or prayer beads. This is your time keeping device, carefully manufactured to have 108 beads. Ask me about that later. You choose something to meditate with and you do that 108 times. That's your meditation. Best part is you don't have to keep track. You could be here or here or here or here or here or here or here. But once you get back to that one bead that has a tassel on it or some other adornment, ah, that must mean I've done one round on this mala. I can choose to do another one or stop there. Maybe your breath is what you do with each bead. One breath for each bead. And you go to the next. Once you get to the guru beads, and you've done 108 breaths, maybe you want to meditate for a long time. Not too long. How will you know when to stop? Once you get to the guru bead, your guru says, stop. You can choose a mantra that's long. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. And we go all the way around until we get to the Guru Bead. And if you know it takes Om Mani Padme Hum. Five seconds. Well, then 108 times 5 is just under 10 minutes, isn't it? So once you get to the Guru Bead, ah! 10 minutes is up. If I want to meditate for half an hour, I just count to 3. That's all I have to do. I just go to the Guru Bead 3 times. That's all I have to keep track of. The whole meditation. Hello, dear Sarah. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> you should be sleeping, dear nomad. Mm -hmm. That's right, dear Kalki G. And thank you, dear Jen, for your paper crane. Aryom Tatsat. Is Om Mani Padme Hum. You spelt it very close. Om, of course, is the cosmic syllable. Mani means the jewel. And Padme means in the lotus. Or of the lotus. Om is also a mystical syllable. So we start and end our mantra with mystical syllables. And in between, we observe the jewel of the lotus. 
lotus flower is a beautiful metaphor. What is the jewel of the lotus? What is the treasure, the precious gem? Well, the purpose of the mantra is for you to discover that. Um mani padme hum. That's beautiful, dear Kalkiji. that dear nomad. We've got some Devanagari from Romi. Goya Tava Prati Premang Shaktin da Urva cha Preshayati Beautiful. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Day Mexicat Dear Kalkiji, you share speaking of Mala, you see Shiva wearing beads on his arms and legs. What are they called? Hmm. It's a good question. I imagine they may be Malas. Of what kind, I'm not sure. Hello, dear Kali. Let me bring up a picture of Shiva. They are also Rudraksha beads, just a different number of them. You can get bracelets in them, they don't have to be 108. They can be of a factor of them. Or a multiple. And you can get Rudraksha beads in bulk and make your own. I don't know how many would fit around you. <laughs> Sounds like a good chance to make your own. Marco, you wonder who's playing this wonderful song. A place called Green Red Productions. Relaxing music. Oh, deep bass meditation music. Relaxing music for complete relaxation. Good night, dear Krillweed. It is getting a little late for me. And I should take good care of my sleep hygiene. So I would like to begin to wrap this live stream up over the next, let's say, half an hour or so. Good night, dear Crossfires. Namaste, Dr. Jenny. Romy. You share that it meant meaning Gaia send you love, strength, energy. 
Oh, I like that. Yes. Gaia. Gaia, yeah. This is the first word, isn't it? Mm. I appreciate that. Stay Gabriel. Hello, Brandon. I have a question for you all. Today I wonder Where is it? Here it is. What is something kind that you will do for your body or mind tomorrow? Good night, dear nomad. Thank you, Romy. Mm. <laughs> I would love to know of the things that you can do for your body and mind tomorrow. Of them, what is kind? Alkiji, you share. You're going to have fun in the astral world. That's what you're going to do for yourself. <laughs> I like that. Medium rare, you share that you will welcome yourself. I believe in you. I and crew, you share to try to allow the newfound hope in without pushing it away. It is so. Dear Dr. Ginny, you will find joy in purposeful work in service to others. I see this for you. Isabella, you share to go outside in nature. Ah, I know you can do it. X ray. You will try to get yourself a Rudraksha. <laughs> I believe there's one closer than you think. Dr. Ginny, you share eat good, whole food. I like this a lot. Your body deserves it. And unfortunately, Randy, I can only offer something uh, to you that I could give to everyone. And although I would like to give everyone a follow, it is just not something practical for me at this moment. Tati Monica, you share trying to connect with the <laughs> with the plasma beings for once and all. <laughs> ah, there is a kind of life that exists in plasma. Ancient philosophers debated about this. Whether fire could be considered something that is alive. Ragnhildo, you share to go for a walk. I am happy for you. <laughs> X-ray, you'd go to the astral as well, but you're not that far. You'd like to dream at all. Mm. I have a good feeling about dreams for you. Akiji to make good food. Yes. And nomad, you share to put your muscles through hell. Work out to make your mind happy. 
It does help release the happy chemicals. That's for sure. <laughs> Pizza roll, shares Kalki. <laughs> Allowing yourself to rest, shares Kali. Mm, good. Zizi, you will gather plants in the forest and make your own cough syrup with honey. How lovely. May the plants that you choose be medicine uh, rather than poison. <laughs> the only S you share exercise, speak positive words of affirmations, and lots of grounding. That sounds like a very kind day for yourself. How lovely. And did I thank you, Isabella, for your finger heart earlier? Allow me to thank you again, just in case. Hare Krishna. And the full thunder. Thank you for your rose, too. Um Kamalir Maha Kalikai Namaha. Romi, you share respect to all humans. Don't care what they are, everyone should get respect. That is very kind. X ray, you ask, is there anything you need to look for in a Rudraksha? Whether it makes you happy, of course. As there's no wrong way to use a mala. They are your instrument for meditation. I would be... I would be mindful of the number 108. It just feels good to have that number. It's supposed to be. You know, it doesn't truly matter if it's any more or any less, but if it isn't 108, that might mean that where you're getting it from um, isn't aware of the energy that a mala has. Whereas uh, a source that does pay attention to that, you know, it must be made with love because they ensure that But yeah, there's the small Rudraksha, there's bigger Rudraksha. You can get whatever one makes you happy. There's one with five faces, four, six, three, seven, two, eight. Some even have one or even none or up to 20. Lots of different kinds. There's a whole assortment. And I hope you have fun finding one that speaks to you. Also doesn't have to be made of Rudraksha. You can get any you can get any kind of bead you want. This one just has some significance. Many different kinds of malas of different materials too. Yes, dear Kalkiji, I can do that. Dear Freya, you will stay sober no matter what life throws your way. I love that. And I feel the power in which you state that. In the go, you share some qigong or qigong and going for a run after sun gazing. Sounds very spiritual. <laughs> the false thunder, you are Nervar, moon and star, reincarnated. Welcome back. Thank you, Kalki, for another rose too. Um, dum, dargai, namaha. Kalki ji, you share, you need Hanuman to keep you in your place. <laughs> He'd be good at that. I love your sentiment, Romy. Jeebers, or Gebers, you share your exercise and make sure you eat enough and listen to affirmations. I'm happy you're feeding yourself. That's good. And be affirmed. And you're welcome, dear John James. Sometimes it's best to leave plans out in the open. Itty bitty. You share eat a well-balanced meal 
as chips and energy drinks aren't cutting it. <laughs> I'm happy you're considering your health. Mm -hmm. I have not gotten a new mala, dear Dr. Ginny, but every morning that I wake up and it's still there, it feels just as nil. And dear Kalki G, is there any harsh advice I can give you in general on the name of Rama? Yes, don't use the name in vain. <laughs> Which means that use this name for good. The power that it invokes. Use it for love. As they say in Hindi, Ram Nam Satya He. The name of Ram is the truth. Ram Nam Satya He. Use it to bring more life into this world. I am not familiar with dear Alan Lowen, dear Romy. But thank you for providing me with a new being I can learn from. <laughs> Some of them are very expensive, dear X-Ray. Malas can be made of quite precious materials. But remember the functionality is just to have a constant number of beads for you to turn to time your meditation. If it so happens that the mala is significant in its construction, then that adds some meaning to it, but it's not necessary to serve a practical purpose, and so there shouldn't be any financial barrier to that. And the malas you make yourself are not only cheaper, but more meaningful, just like the food we make for ourselves. <laughs> I appreciate your humility, dear Kalki G. Dear Andrea, Mm. Andre, you will allow yourself to grieve your boyfriend that passed away from alcoholism. Yes. Grief is the healing process itself. Thank you everyone for exploring this question with me. Dear Peter, thank you for the trio of roses too. Om Dum Durgai Namaha. Dear Rainbow Mom, you share you're embarrassed to say you frequently fall asleep before getting through the 108 beads. <laughs> How fortunate you are. I tell you something funny. I woke up quite early last night and I couldn't get back to sleep so I decided to turn this mala. And I was hoping that um, I would fall asleep while chanting. So I did 108 and then I turned it around and did another 108. And then I turned it around and I did another 108. And I couldn't tell you how many hours went by, but the sun went up and it went way up. <laughs> and I was still awake. I might have turned it 108 times. But definitely, <laughs> I definitely chanted Om Namah Shivaya like 5,000 times or something. And then I stopped. And then I went to sleep. <laughs> Which is funny, because the night before that, I was just like you. I don't know if I, if I barely made it through one, and then I was... But it was nice. Yeah, I like that medium where definitely where possible, make your own tools as it charges with your own energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, G, you provide the sleep mantra. Om Agaste Shahina. That's beautiful. I haven't heard of it before. 
Now I would like to read a little section of Hollywood the Himalayas with you as we continue our journey with our author Sadvi Bhagavati Saraswati. She is in India. She didn't expect to be, but uh, she was there along with her husband for the ride. But now they've gone on a momentary separation. As it turns out, she's the one that found a guru when it was her husband that wanted to find one for himself. Maybe he got a little jealous. He's now in a different part of India, but they're both there. She is studying under this Pujya Swamiji having a beautiful spiritual experience. Let's see where we left off. Since I had started driving at 16, I'd had a morning coffee habit. In high school, on my way to class, I'd ritually stop at 7-Eleven to get a 32 ounce cup of coffee filled not quite to the top to leave room for flavored non-dairy creamers, French vanilla, vanilla caramel, hazelnut. I'd pour them cupful by tiny, by tiny cupful until the bitter junk that passed for coffee smelled like a candy shop. The irony of getting the greatest percentage of my daily caloric intake from non-dairy creamers was lost on me at the time and each morning. I kept myself awake in history, social studies, and other 8 o'clock classes by the virtue of 32 ounces of caffeine. <laughs> as I got older, and gourmet coffee became as ubiquitous as frozen yogurt, my tastes got more nuanced. By the time Starbucks opened in Palo Alto, I'd graduated to triple soy lattes a huge cup of hot, frothing soy milk with three, sometimes four, shots of espresso, and it was the perfect antidote to collegiate sleepless nights and drowsy afternoons. Before arriving in India, I had never tasted Nescafe. The idea of powdered coffee was beneath me. I spoke fluent French, vacationed on the chumps, Alicies, <laughs> don't know if I'm pronouncing that French name right, and then Chamonix, and spent summers in chaly sur lausanne <laughs> where there was no place in my affected self-identity for instant coffee. Then I came to northern India, where if you want to drink coffee, Nescafe it is. In fact, what passes for coffee in India is much closer to melted coffee ice cream than to any serious stimulant. Tiny spoonfuls of brown powder are mixed into sugary milk, sometimes fresh. Sometimes the milk is powdered too. In a fancy setting, one might get a flaking of additional coffee powder sprinkled gingerly on top of the white foam. It was wonderful, of course, as melted Huggen Das coffee ice cream would be, but it was not the coffee in the I need to wake up sense. Hence, I quickly developed and perfected a morning ritual. The man at the local chai shop would give me triple the serving of Nescafe for only quadruple the cost. Therefore, instead of paying five rupees for a cup of mildly coffee-fragranced sweet milk, I paid 20 rupees for the heaping spoonfuls three of Nescafe in my steaming milk. It was bitter and unpalatable, but at least offered the fix of coffee. I soon discovered that by stirring heapfuls foon Oh, am I saying the stirring heaping spoonfuls of sugar into the concoction, I could drink it without gagging. So my morning ritual was set. After morning prayers, I walked to the marketplace, where, fifty yards down, the chai voila greeted me with an enthusiastic Namaste. He sat cross-legged on a raised wooden platform in front of the small cafe. 
In front of him brewed a vat of tea, into which he periodically dropped more loose leaves, or another ladle full of milk from an uncovered pot nearby. He and I, even without a shared language, had worked out a routine. He would remove the huge vat of chai from the single gas burner and, in its place, put a small pot of milk. As the milk came to a boil, he poured once, twice, then three times from the small packet of Nescafe. He then picked up a large steel glass, twice the size of the tiny glasses that most people drink tea or coffee from, and poured the properly brown beverage into the cup which he had handed me with a flourish. I smiled and thanked him, handed him twenty rupees with a heartfelt Hindi Dhanyavad, and took my coffee to sit on the steps leading to the Ganga. The cool marble steps on the banks of the holy river were mostly empty at that hour of the day. Ritual bathers were already gone, and those for whom sunshine was more important than tradition hadn't arrived yet. So from 6 to 6.30 in the morning, just after sunrise but not yet warm, it was remarkably quiet, populated by those in meditation and prayer rather than splashing bathers. I sat on the higher steps, careful not to bring coffee into the sacred area of prayer and puja, which means worship in Sanskrit. Once lips have touched food, drink, or utensil, it's considered juta, unfit for another, and certainly not fit to be in a place of worship. Mindful not to offend cultural sensitivities, I sat high on the steps, watching the morning mist dissipate into the rays of the rising sun as they danced on the waters of the river. That morning, the coffee was purely medicinal, so rather than walk to the banks of the Ganga and sip it meditatively, I sat on a bench at the cafe behind my friend, the Chaiwala, so as to not waste time walking to and from the river. I drank my coffee Indian style to finish it quickly, pouring small amounts from the tall steel glass into a little bowl, swirling the bowl to cool it, then drinking from the bowl. With four or five cooled bowlfuls, I emptied the cup, handed it back to the chai wala, smiled, cooed dhanyavad earnestly, and walked quickly back to the ashram. The clock tower in front of Paramart showed 6.20 as I entered Bhujya Swamiji's outer sitting room, my new guru. The door to the large room was unlocked, so I entered, completely alone save for the orange carpet and a painting of Lord Krishna directly above the saffron cushion. I had just sat on the floor next to the Magic Kingdom door when, suddenly, it opened and a boy's head appeared. Why are you here? he asked in a way that might seem accusatory, but probably reflected only the limits of his English vocabulary. I froze. Maybe it was all a mistake. I was a fool. Swamiji hadn't really said he would see me privately. I had only imagined it. I was delusional, and now I'd been found out. I couldn't speak. I looked down at my covered feet and felt my face flush with shame. You are here to see Swamiji, I think, he said. I nodded abashedly. He smiled. Come here. He said and held open the door. I jumped up and followed him excitedly, hesitating briefly in the doorway to savor the moment I crossed the threshold. The... This is a new word for me. L-I-T-H-E. The lithe... The lit... The lithe young man led me into a room with windows facing Swamiji's garden. The rays of the morning sun were beginning to stream through the glass. In one corner next to the windows was a large desk painted pink and topped with elegant translucent black glass. There were several piles of papers and files lined up and stacked neatly on the window side of the desk. Behind the desk was a large chair covered in a floral pattern that matched the couch on the opposite wall. Facing the desk were three smaller chairs also covered with the same floral print. 
Sit here, he instructed me, motioning to a rug on the floor at the foot of the couch. I sat obediently, facing an empty couch. Swamiji will come soon, he declared, and then departed, closing the door behind him. Moments passed. Many of them. I could faintly hear voices coming from some other part of the complex but could not decipher anything. I was suddenly conscious of the ridiculousness of how I had gotten there and where I was. I was sitting alone on a soft Persian rug at the foot of an empty couch, waiting for a man in orange robes I didn't know to arrive. And then what? All the anticipation leading up to the special meeting. I never thought about what the meeting might be about. Damn. I berated myself. You should have thought of something to talk about. He'll think you're an idiot. He's given you this incredible opportunity to meet him privately and you don't have anything to say. My heart plummeted into my stomach. Maybe he's forgotten about me. I finally thought, with some relief. Of course, he's busy. How and why would he possibly remember that he told me to come see him? I am sure he's doing something more important. I looked around and suddenly felt like a trespasser. How dare I think I'm supposed to be in this sacred room, clearly reserved for those much more worthy than me. Pronounced lithe, says Dr. Ginny. It means thin and graceful. Thank you, my, uh, my poet friend. <laughs> As I was about to stand and leave, the door flew open and Swamiji entered. Yes, he said. It was not a question, but an answer, perhaps, to some unasked question. Yes, he repeated as he sat on the couch. Tell me. The anxiety of not having anything to say vanished. I still had nothing to say, but felt no agitation about it. It felt absolutely perfect to sit there with him, at his feet, on the rug, in silence. He looked at me, and I knew he could see everything. Finally, words began to come. Swamiji, I whispered, wondering where the rest of my voice had gone. I feel so blessed to be here, so blessed to be having these life-changing experiences, I don't understand what is happening, but it's so beautiful. I feel so blessed. I would like to give back in some way, to do something. I looked up at him, and he was staring into my eyes wordlessly. Is there anything I can do? I repeated. He continued to look into my eyes, and I felt his presence inside me. I knew that he had entered the core of myself. He knew everything and could see everything inside me. It was not frightening or embarrassing. In fact, it was the most soothing and comforting experience I could imagine, as though my heart and mind, my darkness and anxieties were plunged into a warm bubble bath. He smiled as his eyes bore through mine. Finally, he spoke. Anything? It took me a moment to remember what he was talking about. Oh yes, I had asked if there was anything I could do. We sat in his office, a separate personal room, entry to which was restricted to one or two of the boys and occasional person blessed as I had been to be granted permission to sit there. There was no question of being interrupted or someone walking in unannounced. Swamiji had only known me for only a few days and was fully aware that I did not know anyone else in the ashram or in any circles of his devotees or disciples. Our worlds did not overlap at all. He could tell that I had no idea what a Hindu saint was, what it meant, what the rules and restrictions might be. He was the first saffron-robed man I had ever seen, let alone spoken to. And of course he knew that I was intoxicated with bliss, floating through my days, my consciousness immersed in an ocean of incomprehensible ecstasy. We sat, 
I, a 25-year-old, temporarily incoherent American student, and he, a 44-year-old renunciant whose life of celibacy had begun before he even understood what he was renouncing. And I had just offered him anything. Anything? He questioned again, and continued to look not into but fully through my eyes. What was he seeing? Yes. Anything, I whispered, the rest of my voice still absent. Suddenly, into the state of stillness, into the state of surrendering my darkest corners and deepest secrets to his loving gaze, into the state of ecstatic openness, I heard my mother's voice. It was stern and sharp. Just get up and walk out. She was now here in my brain watching me sit on the floor at the feet of a man old enough to be my father in the far off corner of the world, offering him anything. Just stand up and walk out right now, she instructed again, forcefully, as though I were a toddler refusing to leave the toy store. Just leave. Now. I smiled at how her voice had found me even thousands of miles away, and how of course she'd be worried. Maybe there really was something to worry about. But, oddly, none of it mattered. I knew that without any doubt, yes, I would give him anything, whatever he wanted. I nodded again to make sure Swamiji knew that yes, I was fully his, fully eager to be taken and utilized in whatever way he wanted. Do you promise? he asked. I raised my eyes again to see him staring down at me, unblinking. My mother's shrill voice was now joined by the voice of Dr. Phil Zimbardo, expert on cults, mind control, and brainwashing. I had been one of the only students in his decades-long career at Stanford to get an A plus in his standing room only psychology of mind control class. Dr. Zimbardo's voice now bellowed through my brain as well. I have to pause the alarm on my phone one second. Testing one, two, three. Okay, we're back. I could hear Dr. Zimbardo's voice now bellowing through my brain as well. You know better than this. You must leave the room right now. Be strong. Gather your wits about you and just leave. His steady voice contrasted sharply with my mom's which had reached a frantic crescendo. Leave, for God's sake, just stand up and leave. I could hear and recognize both their voices, but they were unable to affect me. They seemed to be slightly loud background music, a grating audio track in an otherwise heavenly film. While aware of them, I was not touched. Yes, of course. I promise. I spoke, leaving my mother and Dr. Zimbardo in a far-off corner of my consciousness. As I looked at Swamiji, having promised him anything, the seriousness of his gaze broke and he smiled. Okay, three things. First, I want you to get closer and closer to God every day. Every day, a little closer. Second, Serve humanity. You've been given so much. Use it to serve the world. Third, he paused, and his gaze spread and opened to envelop every cell that had ever been part of who I was, holding the me who had been, the me who was now, and the me who I was yet to become in the ocean of his eyes, he said. Third, be happy. I 
do not want to ever see you sad. If you have any sadness, give it to me. He held out his cupped hands as though begging not for bread, but for my pain. I do not know at what point the tears began to flow from my eyes. I became aware of them only when his now outstretched hands picked up the washcloth next to him and he leaned over to wipe my face with it. By the way, he said, can you type? And that's the end of chapter 10, where we'll stop reading for now. So thank you for listening. And I hope to continue this journey with you as we read next time. <laughs> now we're going to close our Sangha with a meditation, which is a bit of a crossover episode with another creator on TikTok. I'll reveal who that is in a moment, but first, thank you, dear Ragna Hildur, for your trio of roses. Aryom Dadsat. All divine maze, can I make the prayer emoji a sticker? I suppose I can, but I wonder in what way I could improve upon an already uh, sufficient emoji. What kind of, you know, prayer hands would you like? I guess something a little more artistic. Give it henna. I like that. That's a very practical addition. I could definitely do that. Thank you, witness of beauty, for your heart me and half a dozen tiny tinies. Yippee! <laughs> and then how you. Thank you for your heart me too. Arion Tatsa. Naomi Rose, thank you for your heart me as well. Jaya Sita Ram. All right, what are we meditating on tonight? Well, I'll tell you all. There is another wonderful creator on TikTok. I believe he goes by Guru Tanet, if I pronounce it right. He is a wonderful soundscape artist and creates some beautiful auras of sonic resonance for you to relax, dissolve, and find yourself in. Sometimes he even graces our comment section and says hello. Other times I've heard that he has referenced me <laughs> during his live streams and I still have no idea what he talks about. but. In any way I can give back to him, dear Gregor G has asked if we can meditate on one of his songs and I thought, why not? Thus, I'm going to minimize the music we've been listening to so far so that I can bring up a short meditation from Guru Tanet. Without further ado, allow me to maximize it. Ah, I displayed the wrong text. That's for tomorrow. Here's the text I wanted to go. It's called the seven point system of meditation. I'll just put the text all the way at the top. All right. I'll have, to, I'll have to slouch a little bit so <laughs> you can still see my face. <laughs> so, of course, a seven point system is a system that's so amazing. I tried it, it works. I used to not have a system because my ego because like I don't need a system I just breathe but there's a reason why there's a system that's been passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation because it's been proven 
to have, to have amazing results. But it, but if our ego is too big, we won't believe it. Which in my case, I didn't believe it completely. I just practice parts of the system, but I didn't do the whole system because ego again. But when I tried the whole system, I was like, wow, I cannot believe that. That's why there's a seven point system. <laughs> And the master taught this. Okay, the master doesn't really teach that much meditation. Okay, he just tells you techniques from time to time, and you better listen or else you miss it. But when he starts going off on like meditation techniques, I'm like, because that's like he's giving you a manuscript in like in word, right? Seven point system. We we do this. A lot on the stream. So if you're not new here, it's not new. And if you're new here, this is it. First point: legs cross. <laughs> Thank you. Legs cross, back straight, head slightly tilted. Legs cross here. It, you you making your own chair. And you're putting the area where your root chakra is, your perineum, right to the ground. The root chakra, that area, is right on the ground. Right, so you feel like a tree, a bamboo. Your spinal cords are like bamboo locks, right? And if you can do full lotus, you should push yourself to. Because you don't want to be too comfortable when you're getting more to an advanced level. You don't want to be too comfortable because why? It becomes routine. When you when you're meditating and it's comfortable, then you don't. When you're too comfortable, sometimes you need it. But when you're too comfortable, it makes you fall asleep. Right. So legs cross, back is straight. So that you have good posture. If you happen to fall asleep and your back is straight, you're just gonna sway like a bamboo tree. But if your back is not straight and you fall asleep, how do you fall asleep? Right. So this is why having our back straight. If we fall asleep, we just sway forward, and. Like a bamboo tree, and it prevents you from just which I definitely did in my beginning of the meditative journey. Lots of, but now if I fall asleep, legs cross. Point one. Back straight. Point two, head slightly tilted to humble your ego. To be more in, not to meditate for people to like.、Uh, right, I'm not meditating for people's eyes or something out there. I'm meditating to be with my breath, to stay humble. Because sometimes we're doing too much. We're posing for a stock photo. Gettysburg. Okay. Instead, we're meditating for inner connection. Legs cross, back straight, head slightly tilted, hands in the same place, stacked, tucked in. Some people, you can do a a, a round circle. The round circle, it helps you to have another point. When your hand is a round circle, when you fall asleep, your circle will be a a rectangle. Right? It's gonna be a rec. It's gonna be a sandwich. You want your hand to be donut. Right? When you fall asleep, your do donut looks like it's partially eaten. But when you're sitting and you feel hands like donut, you feel the emptiness. The Buddha nature, the Christ consciousness. When you fall asleep, your thumb is gonna droop. 
When you lack mindfulness, your thumb will droop. Legs crossed, back straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked, simple. Or donut. Or you do mudras, but the whole goal is keep the hands in the same place, but traditionally in Buddhist hands in here. Because it keeps everything where centered, right? Legs cross, back straight, head, hands, tongue, right? So next step, tongue gently touching the roof of your mouth to prevent you from when you are deeply meditating to not drool, to not droop. Because you will drool if you're not disciplined, which I have before. Because when you start meditating for 30 minutes to an hour and you don't have good discipline, you'll start drooling because you're in such a deep meditation, but you didn't discipline your tongue. Legs crossed, back straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked, tongue gently touching the roof of the mouth. Eyes partially closed, mostly closed, or mostly open. If you're more sleepy, open your eyes a bit more. When you're really energized, just teeny tiny open your, your eyes. If you close your eyes, your, your body thinks, your mind thinks, oh, you close your eyes, we're going to bed. So it creates more melatonin. So we don't want to do that. Partially closed keeps light in. So the body is like, wait, are you awake? Not sure if awake. Not going to activate melatonin as much. And the last point. Your breath. Breathing in. I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Breathing out. I'm aware that I'm breathing out. Only through your nose. But if you cannot do only through your nose, you don't have to. If you cannot do some of these points, you don't have to. But try to develop towards it. Waking up and meditating is beautiful and right before bed. Because you are mostly available right before bed. And you're mostly avail available right when you wake up. You have the most energy when you wake up. And you have the least energy right before bed, but after a shower, you feel good. But any meditation is better than not. If you keep falling backwards, you're welcome to lean onto a wall. But don't rely on it too much because you want to build back muscle. Legs crossed back straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked, tongue gently touching the roof of the mouth, eyes partially closed, breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I'm aware that I'm breathing out. Let's set a timer. We're going to time ourselves. Let's do 12 minutes and see how we feel. Timer started. I will keep track of the time so you don't have to. Your goal be with your breath. Remember the techniques and check on your technique because if your mind starts to wander, that means you're not with your technique and your body and your posture. When you have lost track of your body, of being in the moment with your body, just go back and start counting your posture. Legs crossed. Is my back straight or am I leaning forward? Okay, I'm leaning. Back straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked. T 
hung, still gently touching the roof of the mouse, are my eyes slightly open? And being with my breath, breathing in. And slowly out. When the mind is busy, you can watch the mind be busy while still maintaining your posture. Oh, my mind's thinking about Elon Musk. Maybe the f- the funny fake version, the Chi- Chinese Elon. Elon Ma. Sometimes the mind does so much to get you to not be present. So what do you do? Oh, my active mind. Legs crossed, back straight. Head slightly tilted, hand stacked. Tongue gently touching the roof of the mouth. Eye, uh, eyes partially closed, breathing in. I'm aware that I'm breathing in. And out. Things that were difficult for me in the past. When phone, when your phone vibrates or ringing while meditating, you don't need to check it. As you begin to be more mature and you sit longer, like 30 minute meditation, you can open your eyes. If somebody call you, it's okay. And then when you realize, oh, I don't even want to answer that. Get back to your techniques. Legs crossed, back straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked, tongue gently touching the roof of the mouth, eyes partially closed, breathing in. And now. And eventually, we don't even need to answer it. But when we wake up and meditate right away, ain't nobody calling us right when we may wake up. And right before bed, ain't nobody calling us. If so, then just wake up earlier. Breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Slowly out. Random past memories about your childhood may come up. Bring yourself back to your posture. Every time you catch yourself observing something, okay, observe and come back to the moment where you never left. It's okay that you have thoughts, it's not bad. But when you start to spiral down the rabbit hole, You're not ready for introspection. We're not, when we're not, we don't, when we don't learn to be present first, we're not ready for contemplation meditation because some people contemplate without learning how to get back to their breath. From clarity, we begin to contemplate our life. When we learn, so we start with the practice of clarity. What, with clarity, we can always come back to the breath.
breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I'm aware that I'm breathing out. It takes about five, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe shorter, for us to ground our energy because we still have the noisy mind active. It takes the mind some time to just chill. Legs crossed, back straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked, tongue gently touching the roof of the mouth. Eyes partially closed. That may be the difficult one for some of you. Breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Slowly out. Your body may be in pain. You can watch some pain arise in your body in this 12 minute meditation. 12 minutes, not too long. Worry about things after the meditation. Breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Slowly out. Simple. Calm, minimal, breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in, slowly out. The mind may ponder how much longer your mind will have thoughts coming and going. Ow, 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 your mind may say. Legs crossed, back still straight, head slightly tilted, hands stacked. Tongue gently touching the roof of the mouth. Breathing in. I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Slowly out. When you're starting to flex your muscles on your back and it's not strong, that's how it is. You're building your back muscle. When you're shaking for a while and it begins to hurt, Lean on a wall, let it rest, and then lean off the wall so that you slowly build your back muscle each time until you can learn to sit. The shaking will happen because you're actually working out your flexors, the thing that help your stabilizers, the thing that help you to stabilize your, your back muscle or your, your posture. In the beginning, when we don't use it, it's weak, but when we use it, we, we feel more grounded when we have good posture. Breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I'm aware I'm breathing out. Your body may be numb. 
Watch it be numb. Your body may feel pain. Watch your body feel pain. You're not the body. Your mind may complain. Watch the mind complain. You're not the mind. You can observe the mind. You can meditate anywhere. Just make sure you meditate in the moment. If you're falling asleep, tighten the way you sit. If you're falling asleep, then you're too comfortable. Straighten your back, check your posture, open your eyes a little bit more, means you're too comfortable that you're not present. When you're too comfortable, you fall asleep. But when you're too uncomfortable, your mind becomes whiny. So that's why you have to find a good meat, a good metal ground. And that is 12 minutes. Breathing in, be aware that you're breathing in. Breathing out, be aware that you're breathing out. I hope you learned something from that meditation. Very simple, but simple is so simple the mind doesn't get it because there's nothing to get. Thank you for listening along with us as we explore Guru Dhanat's seven point system of meditation. Thank you, dear Greg Garji, for recommending that we uh, are inspired by some of his work and using that for our own meditation here, too. And thank you, of course, to Guru Dhanat for. Well, I hope allowing us to listen slash watch to some of his work. I have a good feeling like he would not be angry with us. <laughs> Doesn't seem like that kind of person now, does he? Um. That was deeply relaxing and funny and informative all at the same time. Mm. Love's the way. Thank you for your septet of roses you sent while we meditated. Om Mani Padme Hum And Starlight Wow, thank you for your tiny, tiny Yippee. Angel, thank you for your flowers. Jai Sitaram. Yes, that was really funny, dear Kalkiji. There's a lot of funny moments in that, which helps. Thank you, Dob Darker, for your heart me as well. Mdum Dargai. Everyone wonders if I've met any aliens or entities. I don't know. Do you count as one? If so, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> this is where we will be ending our live stream. So thank you all for being here. If you just joined within the last little bit, hello and goodbye. I will upload the recording of this live stream to my Yamsocks AM 
ASMR YouTube channel. Typically, my live streams go up on my Yamsocks lives, but for Sundays, I try to make them extra relaxing, affirming, validating, so that they may be used for sleep or relaxation purposes. But every other live stream you can find on the regular archive channel, along with the meditations and the readings, in case you wanted to do another meditation atemporally with us, or catch up on anything that we're reading. I think the jokes really help because they remind us that spirituality is not a serious business. Quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> good night, dear Kalkiji. Hello and goodbye, Constance. Thank you, dear Don Suela, for being here and all of my lovely moderators for ensuring a safe, respectful, and inclusive environment. Thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to host this space and have you a part of it. May this live stream be an offering to the divinity within you. Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Murtyur Mamritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Om Lead us from the unreal to the real From darkness to light From death to immortality Om Peace Peace Peace. May you all have a wonderful rest of your present moment. Namaste.